About a year ago, me and my dad started building our dream pond. It's about an acre in size. We've done all the digging ourselves and there's been a lot of ups and downs. So in this video, I've compiled the entire story into one year of building our dream pond. Let's get started. Day one. Our first steps for building this pond is scouting a place to put the pond. We're in the eastern part of Kentucky, so we're in mountain country, as you can see. And you really can't just build a pond anywhere, so you have to find the perfect spot before you even start. Like I mentioned in one of the past episodes, this actually used to be an old coal mine, and so there used to be a pond there before they broke the dam and ripped it out. Check this out. They said there was a natural spring on this property somewhere and that this used to be an old pond, but since then it's been drained. Since everything's already there except the dam, we figured that right there would be about as good of a spot that you could pick. So whenever day two rolled around, we got all of our heavy equipment, headed down into the bottom of where the pond's gonna be and just started clearing out all those trees. To really make sure that the bottom composition is what we want and to put the structure where we want it, we really gotta get in there and clear out all the bushes and all the trees and really make sure that the bottom is easy even and flat and that there's no big holes in it that we didn't know about. In a way, it would be really cool to flood all that stuff and let the fish swim in it. But as soon as we did that, our luck, there would literally be a hole, like a well in the bottom of a pond and we wouldn't even know it and then it just drain every day. So now the equipment we're using to build this pond is one, a dozer. This thing is an absolute hoss. It basically pushes dirt wherever you want the dirt to go. The dozer operator, which is my cousin, tells the dirt to move and the dirt moves. This thing is OP when it comes to building ponds. You could not do it without it. Or you could, but it'd be really hard. Next thing we have is a smaller excavator. Now on a big project like this, we're dealing with some big trees, big bushes. We're really not using this one as much, but we have it here just in case we need it. What we do use a lot is the big excavator. This one's almost twice as big as the smaller excavator. And we're getting in there, picking up dirt, moving the dirt, ripping up trees, all that good stuff. If it needs dug up, this is our tool to do it. Then we have the articulated truck. This is basically an off-road dump truck, which is specialized in hauling large amounts of dirt in places that a normal truck couldn't go. For example, a bottom of a pond. So with my dad, my uncle, and my cousin, all three working together with all those pieces of equipment, they're seriously gonna get this pond done about like that and they're gonna get it done right. And as the day goes on, their objective is still to clear out the pond and then get all the brush and trees, haul it off, pile it up and then actually burn it because we don't have anything else to do with the wood and we have to get rid of it so that we can keep digging the pond believe it or not it's a whole lot harder to burn this much wood than you think just for this one pile it took us like a couple days and we had to keep brisking up the fire to where it would keep burning the new material at the end of day two though we ran into our first roadblock and our articulated truck actually was messed up we had to figure out why and then we had to fix it basically on the motor where a few fuel lines were held together the little ring popped off and so the two fuel lines just vibrated against each other until eventually there was a hole in one it kind of just happens that's just natural wear and tear but at this point in day two we could really look at the pond and see kind of what we were going to end up with and that's when me i wanted to know what could we do to make it big i mean you got to think about it guys the bigger the pond we can make the better the pond we can make in a pond yes bigger is better always but that's when i talked to dad and realized it's actually not why can't we just build that corner of that field up four foot higher, basically making a second dam? We'll see if we can, but let's give it more places to leak. So is the problem that we just don't have enough dirt? Maybe. It's cool what kind of dirt this is. See this hole? So sorry, that's okay. See, when they mined this coal, they drilled the rock and shot the rock up, and they hauled it off to uncover the coal, and they dumped it somewhere. They dumped all that rock here, then we can't use this stuff. If they dump the dirt that come off the top of the rock here, then, then we're good. We've got plenty to work with. Basically what my dad was saying about this pond is that our biggest problem and biggest potential risk is that when we go to build the dam, either one, we're not gonna have enough dirt to do it, or two, the quality of dirt actually won't be good enough to hold water. So what makes one kind of dirt better than another kind of dirt? Well, some dirts have more clay in them and clay is like hydrophobic. So water doesn't just seep through them. That's good dirt. Any kind of dirt that can really pack together and hold back water, that's good dirt. Bad dirt is really rocky. It's really dry, kind of brittle and doesn't pack together very well. In dirt like that, water will just find a way around the rocks, down a crack through that. And slowly but surely, like you, you just get like, the water just goes through the rock and I mean, it'll drain the whole pond. It, it just happens. And with this being an old coal mine, we mentioned this earlier, there's just um, a surplus of bad dirt 
I guess. And so good dirt's kind of hard to find. That is our limiting factor when we're building this pond. Day three and day four are pretty straightforward. We ended up fixing the articulated truck to where it's back on its wheels and ready to just haul some more dirt. And that's exactly what we did. We used the excavator, dig the dirt, load the dirt into the articulated truck and the articulated truck would take it all the way down to the other side of the pond and start pouring it out so that we could start building the dam. My cousin's over there on the bulldozer because not only can you just dump out dirt and call it a dam, you have to use the dozer, pack it in very good to where water won't leak through it and that it won't wash away as well. And just keep in mind, this dam has to be very tall, but to build a dam to hold back water, you don't just have to build it high. As high as you go, then you have to build it out to the side too. So the higher the dam is, if you make it one foot higher, you have to make it come down even more. So it's so much more dirt. And it can't just be any dirt. It has to be good dirt. That good dirt that we just can't find. I mean, technically we could buy the dirt, but man, then you're talking about expensive because you're buying dirt. And we literally have 200 acres. Why can't we just find good dirt? One nice touch that you'll notice up towards the dam is that we actually left a few big trees left in the bottom of the pond. And yes, those are going to be flooded. Now they're not going to go up to the top, but they are going to go about 20 feet up the tree. And I just think that's going to be the perfect spot for me to sit in a boat or off the bank and just flip a jig right up to the tree and like kick its way all the way down i guarantee there's gonna be a bass sitting somewhere on that tree and speaking of 20 foot i actually took the drone and flew it down into the bottom all right guys so right now this is the pond it's looking pretty good but what's important to know about this is let me get a little bit closer and let me actually show you where the water level is gonna be so we're gonna have to keep on going down and down and the water level is going to sit about right here and i figured out with the altitude that it is actually going to be 35 feet deep at its deepest point i don't know about you but i think that's a mega deep pond if yeah i do say so myself most ponds are like six foot deep max that one's going to be 35 so as we're digging up the dirt we keep the good dirt send it off to the dam dump it out pack it down but the rocks will grab those with the excavator and set them over in a pile that's when we start to see this big pile forming of giant boulders that are the size of a truck bed that's a big rock and we have a lot of them. like look at this rock pile i'm telling you this right now if we had to buy those rocks it would be probably over ten thousand dollars depending on where you bought them potentially more and every day that we dig every scoop that we dig we're finding more and more rocks and at the end of day four we're just pulling them out putting them all on a pile and we'll figure out what to do with them later. It's day five. And at this point, I actually have to leave for like five days. So my dad, uncle, and cousin, they're just going to see sitting here digging this pond for five days. And I'm not even going to get to see any part of it. So I headed out. And for the entire week, I just thought about what could possibly be happening at the pond and then i finally got to come back when i came back the dam was like 70 percent complete which is pretty crazy because i mean i don't know man it's starting to look like a pond now the rock pile had gotten even bigger and it had even gotten deeper and they backed it up even farther into the field where they've been digging dirt you know put on the dam day 10 rolls around and i got the news from my cousin hey you need to be figuring out where you're gonna put the rocks because they're kind of in the way and we need the dirt that the rocks are sitting on ah okay Let's figure it out. If we have all these rocks, we definitely want to do something creative with them and use them to our advantage. We want to put them in the bottom of the pond. That way the fish can swim around them, use them as structure. So I told my cousin where exactly I wanted them, a rough estimate. And so they came up with a cool idea and that's exactly what they did on day 10. The pond is really starting to take shape and look like somewhere fish could actually live. Instead of just a big mud bowl, now it has structure in it and places that fish can hide, swim, live, sleep. If fish sleep, well, I don't know if fish sleep. I just try to catch them. It is finally day 11. The pond's really starting to take shape. Rock piles are in place. We've even got a tree down there in the bottom of it. And the dam is getting closer and closer to fill up. But before we finish the dam, we have to take a break for a minute, pull out the transit, and figure out exactly where water level is going to be, how much higher the dam needs to be. And we got to be thinking about how much more dirt we're actually going to need to dig to finish the dam. If you look back here behind me, you can see rock piles distributed out and through the pond. Back here behind me, you see a super long rock point, kind of like a pier, and behind me another rock point. And this is really awesome because if you guys don't know, fish love rocks. And the reason they love rocks is because it gives them so many places to hide from bigger fish. As we're building this pond, we're not only thinking about the catfish and bass. You gotta think about the crawdads. You gotta think about the bluegill, even the minnows, and even the algae that the minnows eat and so as we build these rock piles we have the bait fish in mind imagine you're a minnow you're this big but there's a fish this big trying to eat you what are you gonna do well i'll tell you what i'd do i would get my little minner body and i'd go 
and then I get right back in there to where that big fish cannot get me. Well, that is exactly what all these rock piles do. These rock piles are also super important to the catfish. Unlike bass and bluegill, catfish actually need something pretty special to breed and lay eggs. They need a place where they can get back in kind of like a little hole, be super protected, and watch their eggs like that. In most man-made ponds, there's actually no rocks and no cover suitable for catfish to lay eggs in. So, they just don't. And that's why in most ponds, ever so often you have to restock catfish because they cannot reproduce on their own. But with these, all these rocks, every single rock is giving a catfish an opportunity to get back in the crack and lay eggs. Down in the deepest parts, you can see we have rock piles scattered across the bottom, along with just big rocks sitting and chilling wherever. This is really good because, hey, sometimes the fish will want to go deep. As you look up closer to the bank, you also see smaller rock piles, which will end up being about two to five feet underwater. This is going to be great because we can walk the bank, visually see the rock piles so that we can fish them effectively. Then on the far back end, we built something pretty special. A pier made out of 100% rocks, which the top will be sticking out about six inches so that we can still walk across the rocks. With that many rocks stacked together, it should be a perfect place for bait fish to get in and hide and even spawn and stuff. And the point only about 10 yards from it will be the same exact thing. As you look back here behind me, you will notice a big pine tree. Just like the rocks, this is gonna give amazing habitat for little fish and big fish to just swim around and have a good time. This makes me like so excited because you can look at it on a macro level level where you see the whole tree and you're like, oh yeah, that's cool. I can probably cast right there and maybe pull a bass off of it. Yeah, that's awesome. But I really like looking at it at a granular level. Let's take this right here for example. It doesn't look like much, but what does this stick right here mean to a minnow or crawdad? A minnow could literally live its entire life right in this little area right here. And to us, it's just a couple sticks. But to that minnow, it's going to live its entire life here, make a bunch of friends here, possibly get eaten here, and then reproduce right here. There's so much going on right here for just a small fish. There could be algae grow right here on this stick, and then the minnow come over here to eat it. And then whenever the minnow goes back home, <laughs> he gets eaten because there was actually a bass under that rock. I want to show you some fossils we found. As my cousin on the excavator was sifting through all these rocks, he found this fossil. Take a look at that. Now, what is that? I don't know. Probably a, a tree, if we're going to be honest. But we can say it's a dinosaur if you want to. Make it sound cool. No one can prove us wrong. Somehow, petrified into this rock, we're just going to have, like, straight up a fossil in the bottom of this pond. And it's going to be covered up in water, and we'll probably never get to see it again. But that's okay, because we found another fossil over here, which is so much crazier. Look at this fossil. It's a way bigger tree, and you can very very vividly see all the different things. And this is 100% rock. What exactly was this, you may ask? <laughs> I don't know. Could be a big fish that swallowed Jonah. Kentucky's not that far from Israel. I mean, not, not really, kinda. Yeah, it's probably a tree. But that's mega awesome. But okay, now let's get into the bad news. Ugh. As you could imagine, when you're building a pond this big, there's a lot of engineering that goes into it. And that's because there's a lot of risk with it. If we were to build this pond dam and the pond fills up with water and then the pond dam breaks, you're sending this much water down the creek. And there's actually a couple houses down the creek. So if this busted at the wrong time, it could literally wash away a house, which is terrible. And we're gonna avoid that. But a lot of this comes into the slope that we built the dam. We noticed that the slope was slightly off and that we needed more dirt on the dam. If you don't know, the more dirt that you put on a dam, that's just more dirt able to hold back more water. But this wasn't going to cut it. This was almost to the dangerous level. It might work, but it might not. We ran the risk and it was looking like maybe, maybe 10% chance that something went wrong in the future, but still only about a, maybe a 2% chance that something actually bad happens. Also, let's just keep this between me and you. I made up those statistics, but one thing for sure, the dam was too small. So day 15, our objective is clear. We have to make the dam thicker, and that means more dirt. We had to go down to the bottom of the pond, dig it out some more, which ended up making the pond even deeper and hold even more water, which is totally awesome. So we dug it up, loaded it up in the dump truck, and then I hauled it down to the dam, dumped it out, and my cousin used the excavator to facilitate the dirt around and load it up exactly where it needed to be, which was on the other side of the dam. We also had to track it in good to make sure that every piece of dirt that hit the dam was packed packed in super tight, giving it an even lower chance of busting out. But that's not all we had to do to the dam. In order to decrease the chances even more, we decided to lower the dam. 
And this is the sad part. Because when you lower the dam, you lower the water level, which means the pond is not gonna be as big as we originally planned. But to be uh, decent humans and reduce the risk of blowing someone's house away, that's what we did. And we're very happy to do that. If we can reduce the risk from 2% to 0.02%, we will do that and lower the pond as low as it needs to go. Now, of course, we could reduce the risk to zero if we quit building the pond, but we're not going to do that because we need a pond. So my cousin with the dozer shaved off the dam, made it lower, but we used that extra dirt to pack it on the backside and make this dam be able to hold much more weight, which will make it much safer for everybody. About midday during the search for more dirt, we actually needed the dirt, which was under one of the big standing poplar trees. So we didn't really have any options. We needed the dirt. The trade-off to get the dirt was well worth knocking down the poplar tree. So although we didn't want to, we had to do it. So it is actually back here beside me. We have the big root pot up there and then the two trunks go all the way down to the main bottom of the pond. That should be great for fishing, 100%. Probably even better than if it was standing. As we got towards the end of the day, we went ahead and pulled out the little survey thing so that we can make sure the dam is level across the whole thing. To do this, you set up this little scope thing, completely level, send a guy with a stick across the dam and if you look across and it reads the same number, you're good to go. The pond dam is even. Two foot six. Two feet, three and a half. Two feet, one and a half. Two feet. Two foot six. Basically, we do this until it's all the way across two foot six. We also added the spillway, which is just a pop. Actually, that's not the spillway. That's just a pop. That is the spillway. The spillway is higher up than the pop, but lower than the dam. That way, if the pop gets clogged up, water can still exit without burrowing over the dam and pretty much destroying the dam. After day 15, 100% of the pond dam is complete. We added up the totals and to build the pond, it came out to 725 loads of dirt, 1,091 gallons of diesel, and three really sore backs and knees. Previously on the pond build, my family took this old coal mine and started transforming it into the ultimate fishing pond. Step one was to locate a good spot to put the pond. Back when this property was an operating coal mine, there actually used to be a pond right here in this big sinkhole area. But for some reason, after they stopped mining, they ripped open the dam and drained the entire pond. So we figured this would be the perfect place to start. Step two is to go through, clear out all the brush and all the trees in the bottom of the pond. That way we can see what we're working with with the bottom composition. Step three is to start digging dirt and start piling it up to make the dam but it was on this step that we ran into our first problem since this was an old coal mine and they blew up a lot of rock to get to the coal a lot of this dirt we're digging up is extremely rocky which is considered bad dirt when building a dam the problem with rocky dirt is that it doesn't pack together super well and the water can find its way out which can cause a leak which spoiler alert we're going to talk about that later in this video. Regardless, after the dam is built, the pond is technically complete. But while we're waiting on rain to come to fill it up, we're moving on to step five, which is actually adding structure and cover to the pond. Cover refers to anything that fish can relate to. That's like brush piles, logs, rocks, and even grass. You see, fish can survive in a pond with no structure but they really can't thrive. Fish use structure and cover to hide from predators and to ambush their prey. And if you want a fishing pond that can sustain healthy populations of both bait fish and predator fish, you're gonna need a lot of cover. Earlier in step three, while we were digging dirt to build the dam, we actually found a ton of giant chuck rock, which we put into points and piles, which is gonna be perfect cover. But at this point, the pond is still lacking wood cover, which is pretty important to the fish. And so for step five, I hopped in the excavator and went out through the rest of the property to find stumps, logs, and bushes that I could put in the bottom of the pond to create some woody structure. Here we go. Or at least that was the plan. It won't even start. Give me a minute. I'll figure it out. It didn't start. I heated it up for about 45 seconds. And then it just... Mm, 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 mm. That's all it did. Yep. Well, I'll try this in a couple more times then. If it's tracking real slow like the batteries did, it ain't no use to. Let me tell you how you use the then. Okay. Behind the driver, no worries. The door there, open up that door. Now open up the front section of it. Now there's a box, sir. It's got a green light on it. Turn that switch to make that green light come on. And then just do the same thing as the other one? Yeah. All right. There we go. That worked the way it's supposed to. 
All right, now we're gonna tram around and look for brush piles to pick up. And here we are, guys. We are at the final spot where we're actually going to do some digging. We're gonna stretch out that thumb, and then I'm gonna reach out there, and I'm gonna pick through this big brush pile and see if there's something I might be able to find. And by the looks of it, I may have just found a pretty good piece. Right here, a big old tree with a big old stump. That is gonna be perfect. Let's see what else we can find. And so now that I have a few stumps picked out, I'm gonna try to get all the dirt off of them as possible. That way we can really have the whole root system working for us. And you've just seen the power of this excavator, but now hopefully we're gonna get to see the finesse that these things are also capable of. Where I can just pick it up and gently shake it. Try to get all the dirt out of the roots. And then now that it's clean, I'll bring it over here and set it right here. Now let's go back over and shake out the other one. Bring it right here and set her down. And if I'm lucky, I might be able to finesse my way in there and be able to carry them both back in one trip. This is perfect, guys. Sweet. So now let's carry it back to the pond and uh, we'll put them where we want them. This is awesome. All right, there we go. We got our first load of wood. That's uh, two logs and two stumps. Now we're gonna be putting a lot more wood in here. So where exactly we put these isn't gonna matter the most. But I'm thinking for this first load, we'll dump them right over there in that little hole. Grab some of these rocks, put on top of them so that they, they don't float away. By golly, right there's our first load of logs in the pond. And now we will repeat that process 20 more times. Welcome, Casey. This window, would you like to try a nine five nine wing special? I'll take a number one with fries. Who would you like to drink that? Uh, Sierra Mist. Does that look like french fries to you? Ah! After structure and covers taken care of, it's time for step six, which is patiently waiting for rain so that this pond can fill up. And after 60 long days, the rain finally came. And that brings us to today. The pond is at max capacity with the water. And it's even successfully draining out of the pot. As you look out at the pond, it's a pretty good sized pond, but there is a few problems. The first problem and the most noticeable problem is that we have some floating trees out there. Now, I don't know if y'all know me or not, but like, I'm just like a dude from Kentucky. I'm not the smartest person in the world. For some reason, back in step five, whenever I was putting all the trees in the bottom of the pond, I didn't really consider that they would actually float. And they floated. So <laughs> I don't really have a solution for this. But long story short, what I should have done looking back on it is after I put the logs in the bottom of the pond, I should have took a few rocks and set up on top of them, which I did on a few logs, but obviously, not all of them. To fix that problem, I can either go in, grab those logs, and just drag them out, or I could even take some really heavy weights, tie to the logs, and try to sink them. Those are really giant logs, and you're gonna need a ton of weight, so I don't actually know how we're gonna solve that solution yet. But that's the least of our worries. The biggest problem is that just as we had the suspicions in episode one of having bad dirt that could potentially leak, unfortunately, that is exactly what happened. Now what I'm about to show you is how ponds are supposed to work. This is where the water comes from. It comes off the mountain, down this creek, and into the top of the pond. The water collects in the pond itself, and then whenever the water level reaches a certain point, which is up to this pop, the water flows out the pop, goes down the creek, and out the other side of the pond. Now that's how a perfect pond works. New water's coming in, old water's going out. But unfortunately, we have water going out 
in another spot. And it's right down here on the bottom right of the dam. And this is really bad for a couple reasons. One, extra water is seeping out of the pond. But two, it's seeping out below the water level that we want the pond to stay at. Which means if we don't do something to fix that leak, this water level is going to gradually just fall, 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 fall until it reaches the depth where the leak is. Which could potentially literally drain the pond because we do not know how deep the leak actually is. And so that brings us on to step seven. How do you fix a leak? And we have a couple different tricks up our sleeve but for now we got to drain the pond and find out exactly where the leak is oh no oh no that is not good oh goodness no way no guys i have really really bad news for the pond so long story short we were going to come out here and drain the pond like i mentioned in the last clip but we wanted to wait a few days because it's going to come a big rain and something pretty terrible actually just happened awesome you know full of water but the pond dam broke here we have a big fall i don't really know what to even think about it but that's going on over here's the real bad one the pop is somehow out of the ground so this is actually really bad like i don't know if y'all understand but like this ain't good you know so what happened is somehow the water rose which is all good but it stopped going out of the pot and it just broke the dam and figured out that was the best way to go but what in the world made this pipe buck up like that and it looks like our emergency spillway for some reason you can see it flowed a little bit but after so much the emergency spillway just wasn't enough hmm. i might tell dad he might be able to do something but as for me i don't really know what to do See the problem, what caused it, don't you? Mm. See that the big stump floated from up there and blocked the pipe. Mm -hmm. it is the next day and everything's actually looking pretty good as for the pond dam back here behind me they fixed it they put more dirt to fill in the spots where it washed away right back here at the pop they pushed it back down filled it full of dirt all on the top of that and then right there on the other side of the pop they fixed the spillway so day one update after the pond dam broke here it is Right, guys we're officially on the pond i guess this is like the first time we're actually floating on the pond it's a little weird if you hear something flying it's because there's a drone above me regardless solution a solution b two different kinds of powders let's go ahead and check it out we'll cut it open and basically i have to spread these equally across the pond the way it works throw it in the water it gets in the water water seeps out this stuff actually expands stops up the hole we'll see how it goes basically here's how it works Scoop of solution A, throw it on the pond. Scoop of solution B, throw it on top of solution A. We do this until all 100 pounds is gone, and hopefully this place will be fixed up. Here we go.
All right, guys, it's day six after putting that powder stuff in the pond. As I walk down the dam to where the leak is, you can still see it's pretty wet through here, and we still have a stream of water coming right in here. But what's important is that the stream of water is smaller than it's ever been before. So as of day six, the leak is definitely not stopped yet, but I have noticed a significant decrease in how much it's actually leaking. Maybe that's a good sign. We'll just have to wait a few more days and see for sure. All right, guys, it has been about 20 days since we did that. You can look back there behind me. We actually just had a massive rain, and so, I don't know, water's coming down, I guess. The pond is full. I'm actually gonna step over here and take a look at the leak. I've not really looked at it much since we put that stuff in it. This right here is the area with the leak. You can actually still see some water running. And by golly, right here is a leak right there. I didn't even notice that. That's just water coming straight out of the ground, going out from the below the pond and out right here. And uh, yeah, still pretty muddy. So, I mean, it's supposed to take 30 days for it to completely do what it's gonna do. So let's give it this last 10. And I guess, fingers crossed, let's hope for the best. Cause as of right now, the leak is not fixed. All right, so it is day 247 since we started building the pond. And as you can see back here behind me, we're actually starting to drain it. Oh, so right now we have a big water pump out there. That's actually a pretty heavy duty and giant water pump. Of course they make bigger ones, but not many. Now, long story short, we're pumping out the water from the pond out of the pond. That way we can lower the water level enough to try to really identify where the leak is. That's whenever we're able to fix it. If we really don't know where the leak is, we can't really do much about it. And so we've been pumping for about two days. It's probably going to take two or three more days to really pump it down where it needs to be. So now we just leave that thing to pump out water, take the water level down, and we'll be back to check it tomorrow. All right, guys, it has been a couple days later, and this is where we are right here, right now. The pond, this is the lowest I've seen the pond since the day we built it 200 million years ago, or whenever it was, this is a long time ago. You get the point though. I'm gonna do a real slow pan for y'all. Just check it out. Like, I know I know y'all seen the videos a little while ago where it was drained, but I've not seen this since like, literally back in the fall when we built it. So it's, it's down, all right? It's sinking down. And we're pumping it dry because the leak, we suspect, is still right down in there. So we have to pump this thing completely dry before we can even begin to start working on it. And something you'll notice is that all those trees and brush piles I added to the pond in the last episode, they've actually been taken out. And that's because they were actually a problem. Although they were great habitat for fish, they were not good habitat for fishermen to fish in. So we just went ahead and took them all out. And we're just going to restart with fish habitat after we get the pond leak fixed. All right, guys, it's been about two days since we last did uh, the pumping out water. You can look over and you can see. Uh, the water's as low as it's been and especially up here on the upper side it is starting to get pretty dry but here's the important part if we go down to where the leak is it's it's still wet it's not necessarily rolling out leaking water but it is still wet so what that means is that somewhere even though the water level is mega low in the pond it's st the leak is still somewhere where the leak is able to get wet now that may be a little hard to understand but what that means is that the leak is still a problem even at this water level which is not good that means that even if it filled up and it never rained again it would, this, the leak would just drain it down even lower than this, so. The good news is that it's not supposed to rain for another week or two, and also, we're starting back work in the morning, so all this dirt right here, this is all fresh dirt that we hauled in here. We're gonna be packing this all around the bottom of the pond, and hopefully, we'll pack it right over wherever the leak is, and hopefully, we can finally stop this dang leak. As soon as we stop the leak, 
everything goes into building up the pond to be the best fishing pond ever. But we can't even do that until we stop the leak. One cool thing I did notice is that randomly in the bottom of the pond, some animals been walking around in the bottom. Then once we got closer to it, we noticed it's actually a turkey. As for an update today, that's pretty much the update. Hopefully a lot of stuff's gonna be happening tomorrow. Tomorrow, if we're lucky, we might be able to finally stop that leak. And in the meantime, we're also still got the pump going, pumping out the water, because even that little spot that still does have water, we wanna pump it on out, that way we can pack it full of dirt too. Basically a good clay lining, that way no matter where the leak is or how many there is, we can stop them all up right here, right now, while we got the whole pond drained. All right guys, something just happened. They're down here draining the pond and they said there's fish in there. They said there's a pretty big fish in there about the size of this GoPro thing. I only put a few minnows and I'm talking like 10 and they were this big. Any fish that's bigger than two inches long, but it's news to me. I put minnows in here, but they were only like a two inches long. Look right here, what one come floating Yeah, right those are pretty big. <laughs> There was a frog in there a while ago, son, big as two fish. <laughs> There's about 10 minnows, and they've had the whole pond to themselves for about a year, so. They grow, they? Yeah, they got big. What's the plan now? We're gonna get this pump out of the way and then he start pushing this dirt in there and we're gonna try to seal up over there where the rocks are. Yeah, we never really figured out where the leak was, did we? No, it's possible it could be right there. But? Or it could be on this side and it could be in the bottom. So we put dirt and packed it in all over. It'd be all right. We'd probably, if we have to do any work to it, we'll leave it low enough for the fish to stay down here on this lower end. And as for over here, we got a little bit more to finish up, lining the pond, and then, fingers crossed, the pond should be leak free. Now, of course, there's no water in here, so we won't necessarily know if it's leak free until a couple big old rains. It's time to figure out exactly where water level is going to be. We're going to be making a flat spot around this edge, kind of like a little road, about two foot above the water level. That way we can get down to it and actually fish. And it won't be too crazy to mow. But first thing first for this job, my dad is over there with like a little scope thing. He's going to be looking over here and seeing what number it reads. Once water gets right there, it starts draining. So we'll see what he says. He's looking through a little scope thing. All right, now we head back over there. Up one. Good. Up. 
Up six. Up two. Paint workers. It takes one to hold the stick, one to paint. That's good. You're looking for three foot even. Uh, go down the hill two inches. That's good. And now that we line the entire bottom with new dirt and hopefully fix the leak, there's one other part of the pond that needs our attention. And that is the outlet pipe and the spillway, where the water is supposed to go out of. If you watched the last episode, you know that we also had a pretty big problem right here, where the water actually stopped going out of the outlet pipe, stopped going out of the spillway, and then just took a beeline straight down the dam, which eroded the dam pretty bad and could have been a disaster if we didn't get to it as soon as we did. So to fix this problem, we're gonna lower the pipe a few inches. We're gonna redig the spillway and line it with rocks so that it helps with erosion. And then instead of letting the water dump straight over the hill and run down the hill, which as we saw previously, didn't turn out so great when a big rain came. Now, as the water comes out of the pipe, we're actually going to let it stay level for about 40 to 50 yards until it falls off a rock cliff, which has been shedding water for the past 50 years. So now the spillway's fixed, the leak is stopped, or at least we hope, and then the next couple weeks, the rain is coming. But before we do that, we still gotta get down to the bottom, fix that fish structure, which is gonna be super important for habitat of the fish. Welcome back to the pond build. In the previous episode, we found that the pond actually had a pretty bad leak in it. And so we drained the pond and layered the entire bottom with a clay blanket. Soon after we got a little rain, it didn't fill up the pond, but it did fill up with enough water to let us know we did in fact fix the leak, which is good news. But here's the other good news. In just a few days, we're actually gonna get a ton of rain, which means the pond is gonna be filling up by the end of this episode but between now and then we have to put the rocks back in the bottom of the pond and even build some homemade structure so without further ado let's get started our first objective pertains to the standing trees you'll see out in the left side of the pond now when the pond was first built i love these trees because i knew it was going to be so fun to fish in the future however after taking a look and thinking about it a little bit they were actually going to be kind of a safety hazard because as soon as the water filled up above the trees they were going to drown and they were going to die leaving dead standing trees just 
standing in the pond. And if someone was out fishing on a windy day, well, that could turn out pretty bad. So we decided to go ahead and cut off the trees right above water level. That way we wouldn't have any risk in the future. And there we go. We have one, two, three, four, five, six and a half trees that are gonna be sticking up in the pond and that we can fish. Next, it was time to figure out what were we gonna do with all the rocks we got whenever we dug up the pond. See, originally we put them into rock piles, which is gonna be perfect for the fish. However, in order to fix the pond bottom, we had to scoop them all up and take them back out of the pond. This is when I hopped on my computer and started working on a digital mock-up as to where the rocks could possibly be positioned in relation to the water level. What I wanted was for the fishermen to know exactly where all the rocks were, but still give plenty of benefit for the fish throughout all depths of the water. And this is when I came up with rock lines. current progress of the pond. We're starting to get these rocks in lines, which should be really, really good for the fishing. One more rock, and then we're gonna have to save the rock pier for tomorrow because it's getting kind of late, and I'm getting kind of hungry. Probably gonna get some KFC. How long do you think it's gonna take to build the pier? Half a day, quarter of a day? Yeah, about three hours. All right, guys, well, as you can see, an hour later, it's raining, and let me tell you what that means for the pond. So long story short, whenever you're dealing with dirt, rain is like your biggest enemy. So literally, as soon as the rain started and started getting heavy, we had to quit. We didn't really have any options. Luckily, we was able to get about 95% of the rock pier finished. So basically, I think it's supposed to rain for the next uh, seven, eight hours straight, which is gonna be interesting. But as soon as it does stop raining, we're heading back down to the pond. I don't know guys, that's a decent little bit of rain. I wonder, is this gonna fill it up at all? Or is it just gonna get the ground wet? I don't know, we're just gonna have to wait and see. Shoo! Something like that. It is the next day. Let's check out that progress. As for last night, I don't know dude, it just like never stopped raining. Shoo! Walking up to the pond, here's what we looking at boys. By golly. We got a lot of water just from that. Ain't nothing to complain about, I know that. That's that's like actually a lot of water. I bet those uh, big creek chubs or whatever's in there, them big frogs and stuff, I bet they're pretty happy now because they just got a whole lot more water than, than they did yesterday. Well, buddy, look at that. He's been a turkey walking through here this morning. As for the rock pier, there it is. We had to shave it down. It was honestly like way up here, but that was just way too high for the water level. So as you can see, we had to flatten it out, really pack it down. You may be asking, all right, cool, trees, check rocks check pier check what's next so next we got to come in here we're gonna grab a lot of that dirt and actually put it right here so that that gets deeper and this gets shallower giving the fish a much wider and bigger spot that's shallow that they can actually use to spawn 
<laughs> We're back out here at the pond. This is the current state of the pond. Honestly, it's got a good little bit of water in it. Now, what's really awesome about the water level right here, right now, is that it's even starting to seep up in the rocks at their lowest point. You can just imagine how big fish, bait fish, minnows, bluegill, all kinds of stuff are going to be relating to those rocks. But one thing I do notice is that even though we got a lot of rocks in here and we got some pretty awesome standing trees, I don't feel like we have enough cover. And even what we're going to be doing in this episode is building some homemade fish attractors. Those are which are going to be perfect cover. But as for now, guys, me and Avery, we're going to head down to the store, buy some of the materials that we need, and then we'll meet you guys back at the house and we're just going to get right in there and start building that fish habitat. All right, guys, we're back from the store. Here's what we have. We have these black buckets, which we did not buy, but it doesn't really matter if you buy them or not. It's cheaper if you don't. You can steal them or something. Then we got this right here. It's actually three quarters inch black tubing. It's stiff enough to where it's gonna keep that round shape. And then right over here, we actually have gravels, which we're gonna use as well. So like I mentioned earlier, this right here is what we're gonna be trying to build. And so what that consists of is we'll drill, I ain't sure how many holes yet per bucket, but a lot, but we'll start off with this right here. Just like that, cuts it really easy. Then we're gonna get, get a sawzall. And we just stick that in the hole, just like that. And then from here, once we got like, I don't know, 40 or 50 or something around it, we're gonna take us a good gallon of gravel or something, throw in there. Now that I told you what we're doing, time to actually do it. Abram did something. Show us what you built right here. Well, I saw that we only had 21 like of these pipes left. Yeah. And this one has like probably 50 at least. <laughs> but what I was thinking was what you really need is more volume, more, more, more of a 3D space. Okay. Like so what'd a, you do here? More like a cave. Kendall originally said we should put it all on one side because we don't have very many. And I was like, yeah, we could do that. But then tip it over like this, uh -huh. have them spread out like a fan and all kind of like make like a dome yeah i think i think that's honestly the coolest design now i guess let's take them to the pond put them in sounds good all right let's do it there he is there he is we spotted him <laughs> that's crazy whoa good eye that is the first time we spotted the bear in person or a bear like one of six. My gosh, I feel like I'm in a national park now. <laughs> They're everywhere. Is that the first bear you've ever seen in the wild? No. Oh, no? Look at his tracks right here. Oh, my gosh. That's a big bear. That's not Rambo. He's way bigger than Rambo. Rambo's not that big. Dude, that he was crazy. Gone. That's awesome. Now we got to name that one. Guys, drop another name. Once again, just like Rambo, I'll shout out whoever has the best name. As for where did we want to put the cover, I wanted to put it a little bit of everywhere just so that fish could relate to it no matter what time of the year it was. Some of it up shallow, some of it out deep, and a little bit of everything in between. But getting away from cover, let's talk about the spawning flats. My dad's actually over there digging out one of the spots that was supposed to be a spawning flat but was actually a little too shallow. So right now he's just digging it out and in the process he's going to take that dirt, scoot it on out to some deeper water, and actually extend the spawning flat. For now, here we go. Let's watch him uh, build the rest of this spawning flat. You can take a look this is the water level honestly guys it's getting up there pretty high 
and there's a reason for that. Last night, we actually had a really, really big rain. And if you look on the other part of the pond closely, you'll see that even though we still have blue skies already, we still have quite a bit of water running in. That's thanks to like the 150 acres that actually drains into this pond, which is why after one big rain, this pond could fill up quite a bit. And as for that rain, I actually had a KG trail camera set up on time-lapse mode so that we can go back right now, review the footage, and watch the rain come down and watch the water levels go up. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll be honest guys, I didn't really expect the water level to rise that much from one night of rain, but I guess it was just, I don't know, a lot of rain. So not mad about that. That's one step closer to actually having the pond complete. And one exciting thing is once the water does fill up and we check the pH and some other measurements and stuff to see how the quality of the water is, after that, the next step is stocking the first wave of fish. But as for now, in the pond update, we're waiting on one more thing and that's just a whole lot more rain. And whenever the water level rises on up, we'll go down and check that leak one more time and then we'll start testing the water quality. Because we can't forget, we really can't check the leak until all the pond is filled up. <sighs> Here we go. All right, guys, here with the pond update. We just had a pretty big rain last night. However, it was not really the big rain we was looking forward to finish filling up the pond. As you can see, the pond is about three quarters of the way full. And now we're just waiting on our last big rain to come on and fill the rest up. What'd you say, Mammy? I said it's supposed to come another good rain this evening. Yeah, it's supposed to come rain for the next few days, ain't it? Yeah. Subscribe if you're not already because this pond build has been epic. And as soon as the water fills up to full capacity, it's time to be putting in the fish. And here we are one year later at the pond and it is full of water. But we actually had a pretty big rain last night and it's actually over full. Like it's over full by a lot. Over there at the rock pier, it's supposed to be where you can walk all the way out to the end of it. But like I said, it's a little over full right now because there's so much coming in it from a rain last night. The rock lines that you can see, they're doing pretty slick out here. You can't see all the rocks, but you can see where they're poking out of the water, which will show us where the rocks are. Then of course, the stick up trees doing pretty good. And then it's hard to miss fresh green grass growing on the dam let me tell you this stuff is awesome and the animals think so too here's some trail cam footage of all the different animals we've been getting we've been getting a ton of deer bobcat coyotes black bear and of course a ton of different turkeys and hey we even had two geese out here which is the first time any kind of goose or duck has actually been out here now i will say this they ended up flying away like 20 minutes after i got here but at least now they know the pond's here and they always have the chance to come back. And that brings us to one year later with the pond. Everything is complete. However, we still don't have fish in it. But I will say this, the fish are ordered and they're actually gonna be showing up next week. So out here in the next pond video, we're putting fish in here. Subscribe to this vlog channel if you're not already because I'm gonna be posting all the pond videos on this channel now. I guess that's it for now. One year review of the pond and it is officially full of water, but a little bit too full right now. We'll catch y'all in the next video.